I'm here to tell you that whatever CAD system you're using unequivocally stinks. You picked the wrong one. And that is consensus amongst everybody that is using a different CAD system. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've gotten into discussions with people that use different CAD systems stating that this one stinks, that one stinks, this can't do this, this can't do that. And to be quite honest and fair, this isn't a rah-rah session for whatever CAD systems I use or bashing sessions on CAD systems that I don't use. But this is more along the lines of your own confirmation bias. We're all good at whatever CAD system we picked first. It's what we hold near and dear in our hearts. It's what we learned maybe in college. Maybe you started something in high school. Maybe you were a maker and decided you wanted to learn something for 3D printing and it grew from there and you just had to get into different design packages so you decided to learn something like Fusion 360 or whatever that may be. Problem is that once we form a bias, we have a tendency to look at the world through that bias, which is fine. I'm sure that in some way it's helped us get through many things in life, but there are often times where this also backs us into a corner, and once we're in that corner, getting out of it can be a little difficult. So back to confirmation bias. And I'm gonna use this as an example. I'm not gonna drop any names or talk about anything or anybody in specifics. But I was an application engineer at the time, brought in to discuss one of the packages that I use, you know which one of the two, and I'm sitting across the table from this gentleman and he was using a different package, again this is 15, 16 years ago, and he was absolutely resolute in not doing anything with anything else. He wasn't going to move and he was the lead of the group, so getting this guy's acquiescence, getting him to agree to try something else was pretty important. And by this point, the company had already built a couple of cars. There was some more on the way, but they needed to expand. And at a certain point, when a company grows to a certain size, it makes sense to look at additional solutions. And the reason why is, is because some of the, and I'm not using this as a derogatory in any way, I'm just using this in the context of, we'll say low-end CAD tools, and the context is, well, they're super affordable, they may be limited in the tools that they have, like not being able to do Freeform or Shape Studio or that kind of work, but when it comes to, let's say, standard prismatic, three axis, four axis, and potentially even five axis machined parts, most tools, even the Fusion 360s or FreeCADs or whatever, do a really good job of allowing you to design parts that are fairly accurate. So when I say low-end tool, it's again not meant as a derogatory, it's just meant as a classifier. So I'm sitting across the table from this gentleman and we're going back and forth, round for round. He's showing me what he likes to do, now there are differences in software, but at some point he's got to concede that there are things that my software does that his doesn't and it's showing a big gap in what they can do at that time. And again, I conceded to the fact that whatever they were using at that point had gotten to the point of putting vehicles on the road, selling cars. So I'm looking for a little bit of a concession from this gentleman and he absolutely refused to give it. And it was at that point, and this was kind of a dirtbag move on my behalf, I asked him a few very pointed questions. So if you're so reluctant to even think that another tool could potentially do any good for you, are you so baked in on certain ideas that it's affecting your job? And it kind of hit him pretty hard, right? Because if I'm so biased for something or against other things, and again, sometimes that bias may be good. You know, maybe there's a good bias to have for not eating certain things thousands of years ago, right? Or not sticking your hand into something, again, thousands of years ago when a lot less was known about the world. And I could see it on his face that his absolute reluctance to budge on anything was becoming a hindrance to him. And the unfortunate worst part about it was his management was in on that meeting. So I had to soften my tone a little bit. And I said, well, 
something along the lines of, because this has happened so long ago, I'm going to have to paraphrase. I say, well, if you're designing things a certain way and you're getting a good result, doesn't it make sense to potentially look at things a little differently to see if you can get a better result? Because if you're able to get to where you're at now with what you have, wouldn't it make sense just try to make things a little bit better with something a little different? And it was at that point he began to soften a little bit because, I mean, let's face it, you don't want to look like a complete hard nut to crack in a meeting with a bunch of people that are trying to genuinely do something good for the company that work at. So those biases that we have, and I get this a lot, well, which CAD system do you prefer? Which one do you like? Which one do you like? Well, it depends on the day. Right? It depends on the moment. It depends on what I'm doing. There's so many ifs, ands, or buts. I'm a human. I have, believe it or not, I have more than one emotion. Generally, I'm pretty happy. Sometimes I'm indifferent. Sometimes I'm irritated. But uh, there are times when I sit down and go to work and I just do the old face rub, like, oh, oh this again. Right? I wish it was another CAD system because this may be a little bit easier here. Or... I'm glad it's in this system because it's definitely better in this one than the other ones, etc. So the big thing here is think about your biases. Think about what you do. Think about every action and interaction that you have. And maybe it's time to take a step back and think about why you have such a negative, profound response to something that could potentially be really, really good for you in the future. So why is confirmation bias a thing? Why am I even talking about it? And why are we getting into this subject? And this is surrounding several questions that I've gotten over the years. You know, the, your what's your favorite CAD system? What do you hate? Which ones are terrible? And to be honest, I will get into some of which ones are terrible later on. But it also has to do with people's general attitudes and mentalities. Sometimes dealing with somebody that's so biased in something that they can't see past what it is they're doing, dealing with somebody like that can be very frustrating, okay? It's unfortunate. A lot of people tend to be that way, maybe less and less these days. I don't know, especially from the perspective where I'm at, where generally people are happy to see me. But it can turn a work environment into something kind of stressful and unfun. We're at work minimum 40 hours a week, sometimes 50, sometimes even more. My goal is to make that time the time where I spend most of my time around people and try not to make it so stressful, try to make it enjoyable. So oftentimes it's just a question of what sort of attitude or vibe do you want to put out? Next is and this goes back quite some time, back when I first got into the industry design. I'd been on NX for several years, and it was at a time when all of these OEMs were hunkering down, and they were picking different softwares, like Ford was using SDRC ideas, Chrysler was going the Katia route, NX was going the Unigraphics route, so when you picked the silo that you wanted to be in, and for me it was GM because honestly it was two miles away from where I lived. I picked it because of convenience, the cost of the training, the availability, and I knew I would enjoy it because as you heard in my autobiography of sorts, that I am a tinkerer, it's just my nature. I get my jobs at GM and I really like them, but you know things eventually just turn tedious and you want something new and fresh. But you, at that time, you were very limited. You couldn't quit a job and go to another shop or position or different location or anything like that without having to take a very long break. It was just baked into the contracts. And you would be out of work for at least a month longer and the other place would be itching to get you in and not really willing to wait 35, 40 days for you to basically cut yourself free from one contract and enter into another one. I, you know, suspicious labor practices, that type of thing. But that's what we had to contend with. 
So then I took it upon myself to not be so closed minded and say, you know what, I'm going to learn another CAD tool because that's going to free me up. And I picked B5. So I got a book and fortunate for me, there was software available. Some of, I had managed to land a job out of state. They had a version of V5 on a machine and I'd sit and click around and learn it and do as much as I can to pick up an additional software. So in order for me to quit GM, I had to, no joke, move by car eight, nine hours away into a different state altogether at a company that was basically separate from anything GM direct. And again, they had V5 because they were a supplier. They supplied lots of people and I got my hands on it there and I got to work around it and I became quite good at it. Thank you for that. And then I came back to Michigan, went back to work. At first it was a GM facility location. And then I kept plugging along with my V5 education until I was able to break away. And then once I broke away is when I got into the consulting and training and mentoring and these other things. And that's where I really learned that as different as these softwares are, there's a lot of similarities. And having such a deep bias, if I had just stuck with the one and continued down that path, it'd be a very different place for me in the world. But I feel I would have missed out on a lot. And it's one of those decisions that, yeah, it was hard. Yeah, it took time. But in the end, it was one of the best decisions because, quite frankly, it opened up markets for me that I never thought possible. And when I got my adjunct professor title to work for Macomb, Macomb Community College there in Warren, which is another two miles further down the road from where I grew up, I was teaching Katia. I was there for Katia, not NX, even though it was right next door to General Motors. We had other people there that were able to teach the NX things, but they needed someone to do the Katia stuff. And that's where that came into play for me. So it's played out very well to learn and not to be so biased because it's basically grown the pool of opportunities for me, not doubled, more than tripled, more than quadrupled because there's places that have both softwares and they need somebody in some instances that can dance on one and dance on the other. So all I'm saying is, is try to set aside whatever biases you have. It's your favorite. I get it. We're comfortable. There's nothing wrong with that. You want to be really good at this thing that you, you're really comfortable in. But sometimes it's nice to have other things as a backup, especially if wherever you're working is going through troubles, they're going to reorg. And you may need additional opportunities to go somewhere else. So set aside ego a little bit and potentially learn something that can open up markets for you and the only way that really happens is, again, as I said, set aside that ego and be open to change, especially, especially, especially if the place that you're working is bringing somebody in and training you or giving you the opportunity to take training or whatever that is and give you software. Because if you're going from, let's say, a SolidWorks into an NX, which I've done a ton of training on lately, you know, that's one of those things that can make a big difference in a career trajectory. Or if you're going to go from Creo into Katia or NX or something along those lines. And again, I'm not saying those softwares are bad because they're not. They're actually quite good. And <laughs> the cost associated with them is pretty good. It's just one of those things that opens up opportunities. And to be very honest, this is probably one of the greatest quotes I had ever gotten from somebody. And if he's, he's watching this, I, I hope he recognizes it and has a good laugh with me. And basically, the company I was doing some training at was transitioning from one software to the next software. And he looked at somebody that was just being a grouse about it. And he said, listen, this is the software you hated before. This is the software you're going to hate now. There's no difference.